everyone, I'm your host PensyFan19 and welcome to the January 2021 Pensy Fan Periodical. This is a monthly news series which covers most of the major railroading headlines from around the world as well as my opinions on them. We have a lot of articles to go over today, as a matter of fact the most this series has ever had, so let's get rolling. First off, we're getting the Tennessee Pass back. After sitting idly with no service since 1997, Union Pacific has agreed to lease the line to Colorado Midland and Pacific Railway, the subsidiary of Rio Grande Pacific. Even though the proposal is for freight service between Parkdale and Sage, Colorado, Rio Grande Pacific also proposed to run passenger service along the route with service reaching all the way to Pueblo, a city which hasn't seen passenger service since A-Day in 1971. As this article mentions passenger service, the passenger aspect of this story will be focused on more than the freight aspect, as we already know that with the restoration of any right-of-way, brings about economic opportunities for development, especially one that connects Pueblo, a relatively large city in Colorado, with the rest of the Union Pacific. Anyways, Rio Grande Pacific has noted that they will be running passenger service, specifically between Pueblo and Minturn, Colorado. So this leaves a very important question. Where on earth is Minturn? And is it connecting with the California Sephir at any point? Nothing a quick Google map search can answer. And it... Just missed it! Oh my gosh, they missed the California Zephyr by that much! Come on, guys! No! Rio Grande Pacific missed the connection at Glenwood Springs by only 58 miles! Just a little bit more, and it could have connected with the former Rio Grande mainline with the existing 191 mile long route. Or at the very least, just 39 miles to Dostero, where the Tennessee Pass splits off from the mainline. This would have been the perfect transfer with the California Zephyr from Pueblo to anywhere west. But wait, not everyone is okay with this lease, as the rival in Colorado Pacific is objecting this proposal with the Surface Transportation Board, which is going to be the same effort as Norfolk Southern objecting for CSX purchasing Pan Am Railways. I'm saying this since UP already said it's fair for Rio Grande Pacific to lease a line because that's how capitalism works. But wait, the NIMBYs are at it again as they are voicing opposition against resuming service on the route. Seems like they're everywhere today. Hopefully we're able to see freight and pasture service return along the route and see it bring needed growth to the underutilized region. Up next, new photos have been released for the R211 as they're about to start testing in a few months. The interior looks pretty good, even though a lead G sign looks a bit odd on the subway. I'm not sure why this car has normal doors instead of the through hallways. Other than that, S-Bahn Series 484 subways have entered service, while Shenyang has inaugurated their Line 15. Awesome and Marcel have released their design for the Metro's Listen to the City fleet, while SNCF is also working with RATB to order very abstract DMUs for RER Line B. DB is to order Siemens to zero HC and Miro EMUs, while LTG is to purchase 30 EMUs. The Larusium Railways is testing Sadler flirts. Metro North is receiving more M8s, while Greece has received the first of five awesome BTR 470 Pendolinos. Stadler CityLink trams have arrived in Hungary, while RegioJet has received their first two Trax MS3s for their fleet and service expansion. Mosaganum Tramway has started testing in Algeria. Awesome Citadis X05 trams have entered service in Kaosuing, while Istanbul has opened their first LRT line with ground power. CD has placed their Regio shuttles from Swag in service. Epichantris have entered service on a name which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. And Costa Rica has received DMUs from CRRC to replace their rare GE U6 locomotive hauled trains. Speaking of which, here's some interesting news. CRRC is taking over the world as their products are being sold everywhere, such as DMUs for MAV in Hungary, electric diesel MUs for FA in Chile, and Type BK G2 diesels for Belarusian railways. Meanwhile, Janice in Wyoming has invaded Poland. Egypt's high-speed rail system is to be dominated by Siemens Rolling Stock, while their monorail is to be built by Derby Works in England. Art is seeking proposals to reuse their retired subway cars. Quick California State Railway Museum, preserve them! Fox Rails to receive a single Siemens Vectron. Austerity 060 number 62 named Ugly has been withdrawn for inspections. A Swiss railway with a somewhat unfortunate English acronym ordered 8 custom-made narrow-gauge Stadler EMUs. Arivia Netherlands has released their names for their Sadler Wink fleet. The tenth one down is my favorite. Norfolk Southern held an ultimate EMD vs GE showdown as a lone SD70 ACE and Jeevo raced in Elkhart, Indiana, where they were also spotted pulling a six car long intermodal. A surfliner Siemens Charger stated it was going to Vancouver. 
Network rails to improve and protect line-side biodiversity. A multiple unit powered by human waste is to run on tramways and branch lines. I don't know what to call that. HWMU or WMU? South Shore Line is to lease Metro bi-level EMUs. SS Badger, the last surviving CNO Great Lakes railcar ferry, has been sold and preserved. Trump's Twitter account has been permanently suspended. ZSSK has received a dual-mode narrow-gauge locomotive from Stadler. BTC 2.0 is coming soon. Avanti West Coast has revealed their official design for the Class 221s, and based on the from the train sets, this makes Train Sims World's prediction of their livery wrong. And design changes made the Class A10 an entirely new product, instead of being part of the A Train series. I'm not sure what the design changes are, but please keep the cab. I don't mind what you do to the rest of the train, just keep this and this. At least the interior looks good. Since we are in the year 2021, especially considering those of you who said 2020 was technically in the 2010s decade, we are now officially in the 2020s. Considering the advancements in green technology, many companies around the world are pushing for net zero carbon ratings, and the railroads are no exception, as Co-Rail is to phase out all of their diesel locomotives by 2029, while Russian Railways is to stop purchasing diesel-only locomotives by 2025. Some railways have been recognized for the movement towards sustainability, as Canadian National has been ranked the 10th most environmentally friendly company in the world. We're also seeing the rise of battery-powered train sets, such as Newark's VMUs on the West Pomeranian Flavio ship, tri-mode locomotives such as the real British Rail Class 93, and hydrogen-powered train sets such as the Alstom Island, which won a European Railway Award. I'm also glad to see that SNCF and Bombardier on converting their existing VMUs into battery-powered multiple units for VMUs. This way, a company doesn't have to spend as much for a brand new rolling stock when they can convert what they already have for a lower price. The US has been doing something kind of similar with passenger and freight roads rebuilding and converting their diesels, but their engines are still fueled by fossil fuels. And remember when I said this? Even though a new study shows that batteries beat hydrogen in terms of efficiency and cost. Even though I'm still a fan of hydrogen powered trains, CRRC was able to combine the two developing fuel sources by making a hybrid! But alas, we have the sad news. An ICE TD train set has been scrapped as the class has been mechanically unreliable only after 20 years in service. At least one still uses an advanced train lab. Grand Central Railway and Hull trains have suspended operations for a third time due to Britain's lockdown. Malaysia and Singapore high speed rail has been terminated due to no agreement on new negotiations. Cargo tram freight service carrying Volkswagen parts has ended, thus ending the only freight tram left in service. Biden cancelled his trip to DC by train for his inauguration, even after Amtrak made a decent 50th anniversary unit number 46 for the event. UTA has selected a bus route instead of a light rail expansion. Highway England wants to finish off what Beachy started. Yikes. And Long Island Road has cut train number 1501. This unique train is the only electric power train which runs to East Wilston and will be greatly missed among Long Island Rail fans. Lastly, the island line on the Isle of Wight has retired its last Class 483 on January 3rd in order to make way for a new Class 44, rebuilt from DSOC cars thus continuing the Island Line tradition of rebuilt un London Underground cars running the line. This now gives the title for the oldest running train in the UK to British Rail Class 08, specifically Scott Rail 08308, built in October 30, 1957. The Island Line will also be closed until March 31st for massive repairs so that the Class 484s could run properly on the line. The Class 483 started their lives as 1938 stock on London Underground, they were transferred to the Isle of Wight in 1989 to replace the Class 485 standard stock. These multiple units were the oldest running in Great Britain, with over 80 years in service. Since these trains were running for Britain since 1938, which means that these trains were running since before World War II. With that in mind, I have a tribute for these legends in railroading history. Roll the clips! And I also have no footage. Sorry for the obvious yaoi joke. Now here's the follow-up news section for articles covering stories from previous episodes. Brightline West is expected to start construction in the spring. New Jersey Transit is receiving the first of 25 new ALP45s, while CRRC Bisons have arrived in Hungary. 
REM has started testing their subway cars in route while Amtrak has started testing their Midwest Valaro coaches, and Waptec Flex Drives has started testing on BNSF. MTH is to produce the Union Pacific Big Boys their last luck level before shutting down forever. Norfolk Southern 8520 has been transported to the Yadkin Valley Railroad. NSB class EL18s are now in the go-ahead Nordic livery. Final alternatives are being considered for the East-West Rail Project from Boston and Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And Biden passed the stimulus bill for transportation agencies, which includes the MTA receiving enough funding to avoid service cuts and layoffs, and the possibility of Amtrak receiving $1.5 billion in funding, which could be enough to restore daily LD service and bring furloughed workers back. Up next is the station upgrades portion for proposals, constructions, and openings of stations around the world. For this episode, we have a forum one for the CTA with Lawrence, Argyle, Berwin, and Bryn Mawr. We also have Wolverhampton, Castleford, Doncaster, Manchester, Hume, Woodlands North, St. Mary Cray, and apparently that's pretty much it. Arden leads opening platform zero. Now well. In our news, refurbished British Rail Class 387s have re-entered service on Heathrow Express. CSX has added an LNG car to their safety train fleet. A JSEV Cargo Vectron and its model have confirmed that there is no planet B. Patriot Rail has acquired the Salt Lake Garfield and Western Railway while the lineage purchased Cyrotrans. Eau Claire, Wisconsin is to pursue passenger rail service to St. Paul. Afghanistan has opened a friendship bond with Turkmenistan with the introduction of their railway. Cologne has ordered six additional Bombardier Flex to the LRVs. GameStop can now give customers 25 cents for all video games instead of three. Reading 2101 has been restored. Amtrak started testing on the Point Defiant Spy Pass again. Dallas has released a new livery for their HST. China has unveiled another maglev prototype with a top speed of 385 miles per hour. And an Illinois Central E unit and a passenger train will be used to film an ABC TV series known as Women of the Moment. However, the E9 unit used was built in 1954, and since this show is set in 1950, this set is therefore wrong. After all that, it is now time for this month's Meme of the Month. This month's Meme of the Month is... Called in the cab. And now, the top story for the first Pensy Fan Periodical of 2021 is... Metra orders bi-level Alston Caradia cab cars and coaches. This is a huge surprise from the Chicago Commuter Railroad, as they will be utilizing brand new coaches and cab cars to replace most of their existing Pullman and Nippon Shario gallery cars, which have been roaming the region since the 1950s. Although there are rumors that Metro will acquire the Nippon Shario cars from Caltrain once they're replaced by electric bi-levels, so the gallery design may still be in the Chicago region for a bit longer. Since Metro is not known for purchasing brand new rolling stock, as their newest acquisitions include F-59 PHIs and rebuilt SC-70 Max, it's very surprising to see Metro order a new type of coach cars to add on to and replace the gallery car design. One thing I must point out about this design is that the front is completely flat, instead of round like other multiple units which Alston made. This is also contrasting with the newest CEM and FRA standards applied for new cab car purchases in order to protect the crew, specifically with an aerodynamic front to act as a barrier. So Alston not including this important feature on the cab car is very odd, since the thin layer of metal between the front of the train and the crew wouldn't be enough to protect them from accidents. And that's one of the main reasons why most early Bombardier bi-level cab cars have been converted into coaches and replaced by safer CEM cab cars. Additionally, this flat front bi-level coach design is unlike anything else in the Alstom Caridia family, which includes multiple units such as the British Trail Class 180 and 458, the Regiolus, the SJX40, and the Lint and Island. This makes these new coaches and cabs the first of their kind, and quite possibly the first model in the Alstom multiple unit series to be a coach and cab car instead of a multiple unit. Other than those points, this is still an unexpected move by Metro, and it will be very interesting to see how they fare in the busy commuter railroad once it's in service. Thank you everyone for watching this month's episode of Pensy Fan Periodical. There have been a lot of rail news headlines for the month, and it will be very interesting to see what the future has in store for all of these articles. Thank you again for watching. Credit for most of the photos used goes to their original photographers. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Have a good day.